Coding Made Easy. So what's up everybody, this is Peter, aka Coding Made Easy, bringing you a brand new tutorial series. And in this tutorial series, we are going to be learning on how to do some Windows programming using the Windows API. So if you guys are beginners to C++, I would advise you guys to learn the basics before you go into Windows programming, but if you've come from another language and you just want to delve into some Windows API, feel free to do so. But if you're if you ever get confused or stumped along the way, feel free to watch my C++ Made Easy HD tutorial series. So anyways, let's just get started. We are going to go uh, to File, New, and we're going to create a new project. And we're going to select a Win32 project, and I'll call it, I'll call this YouTube win project whatever sure we're gonna click next and we want to click empty project now we're going to uh, make a CP file and we're just gonna call this one main and uh, we already know what includes do and what we're gonna do is we're gonna include something new this time and we're gonna include windows.h and what windows.h allows us to do it gives us access to all the functions all the uh, defines all the type devs everything that windows has to offer for us now one thing about the windows api is that it confuses a lot of people and it scares a lot of people because of the weird naming scheming for variables and such like that but do not be scared um I will tr I will explain everything in in depth so you guys will understand the Win API inside and out. So, anyways, uh, in the traditional C plus plus, whenever we have an entry point, we normally do int main and we do return zero. And if we were to run this, we get an error. We get a linker error. It says unresolved external symbol Win main at sixteen. Yada yada yada. And the reason why we're getting this error is because for Windows programs we have to have a, we have to use a Windows based main entry point because it has special parameters that we need to employ. And so this is how we do it. So we have integer that's the return type for main, and we have Win API, and I'll explain what that does in just a moment. So we have our Win main, and remember it's case sensitive. We have H instance. We have another H instance, and we'll call this previous instance. We're gonna have a P PSTR to a CMD, sh C uh, oh yeah, command line. And last but not least, we're just gonna have an integer, and we're gonna say show CMD. And then we'll do return zero. So uh, before we continue, we're just gonna run, uh, run this application, see if it goes properly, if it runs properly, and uh yep it runs effectively so we obviously don't see a window there's no code for any window we don't have a console window or anything because there's no code uh for that either but uh basically i'll walk you through what's going on so if we hover over win api that's just defined and it's defining um a macro uh for two underscores std call now i'm not going to go into all uh, the details of what that does because it, it's not important but the reason why you put S win API here is that it's for backwards compatibility and let's just say like let's just say Windows 8 or Windows 7 uh, this was an unimportant right let's just say it didn't employ it or didn't do anything useful but let's just say in Windows 9 or something um, they when API did something different the define stood for something different you you're with Win API, your code is guaranteed to work no matter which iteration of Windows comes up or which past when which past iteration of Windows there was. So keep Win API there, and your program will run run smoothly. So um, and you could replace Win API with std underscore uh, call with underscore with the double underscore std call. But again, if Win API changes to something different, then you're gonna have problems. So we have Win Main, which is the Windows version of Main. That's what's called Win Main, and we have four parameters. So we have H instance, and H instance is a type def. And don't let this confuse you. H instance stands for a handle to an instance. That's what they called it. 
And it's basically an ID, it's like an integer. It's just the ID for the instance of the application. And the reason why Microsoft named it H instance is because they want you to think of it as a handle to the instance rather than thinking of it as an integer or an ID. So the handle of an instance is just an ID to the instance, the current instance that you're running. Now we have another H instance or another ID which stands for previous instance and this is completely irrelevant to computers nowadays the only reason why we have it is for backwards compatibility and we are never going to really use it um or we we're never going to use it and then we have the pointer to a string if we hover over this it's just another type def to a char pointer and uh, this is if you want to add command line arguments whenever you run your program, what happens when you add command line arguments, or so on and so forth. The last one is just what happens when you actually, um, how is your program initially displayed when you open it? Is it fully maximized? Um, is it minimized? Yada, yada, yada. Uh, but these stuff will be filled in for you uh, automatically and you'll be able to do various things with it. So um, I'm going to end this tutorial here. Um, so just to recap on everything, this is just the, a macro that you should include just in case Windows decides to change it. We have a handle to the instance which is just an ID to the current instance of the program. We have a handle to an instance for the previous instance, which is just used for backwards compatibility. We have a pointer to a string, which takes command line arguments. And we have an int that lets us know how our window is actually going to open. And um, and yeah, that's basically it. Oh, uh, now before now before the tutorial ends, I've just located uh, my where my calculator is on the computer. And I, if you go to if you go to properties and you look at the run, uh, you can run it in either minimize or maximize mode or, or a normal window, and that essentially is what's going to be passed into the show CMD. So you can check whether it starts off in minimize mode or if it starts off in maximize mode, and yada yada yada. And you can make alterations to your program based on this value. Same as if you run your program from the command line. If you add in command line arguments, it can alter what your program does. So anyways, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And I hope you're looking forward to your next tutorial. So thanks and bye for now.